Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Pentaho World 2017. Brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. We are kicking off day one of Pentaro World, brought to you, of course, by Hitachi Ventara. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, and along with my co-hosts, we have Dave Vellante and James Kobelius. Guys, I'm so I'm thrilled to be here in Orlando, Florida, kicking off Pentaro World with theCUBE. Hey, Rebecca, twice in one week. I know, this is very exciting, very exciting. So, so we were just uh, listening to the keynotes. Uh, we heard a lot about the big three, the power of the big three, which is Internet of Things, uh, predictive analytics, big data. So the question, for you both is, where is Hitachi Ventera in this marketplace and are they doing what they need to do to win? Well, so the, big, the first big question that everybody's asking is, what the heck is Hitachi Ventara? <laughs> like, what is that? We, maybe we yeah. should have started there, you're right, well, and, you're right. And, and, and you know, we joke, some people say, well, it sounds like an SUV, you know, okay, <laughs> Japanese company, blah, blah, blah. But when you, the, when we talked so to Brian well Householder. they're well-engineered SUV. So Brian Householder told us, well, you know, it really is about vantage and vantage points, and when you listen to their angles on insights and data anywhere, however you want it, so they're trying to give their customers an advantage and a vantage point on, on data and insights. So that's kind of, kind of interesting and cool branding. The second big, I think, point is Hitachi's undergone a massive transformation itself. Certainly Hitachi America, which is really not a brand they use anymore, but Hitachi Data Systems. Brian Householder talked in his keynote, when he came in 14 years ago, Hitachi was 80% hardware yeah. and infrastructure and storage. And they've transformed that. They were about 50-50 uh, last year in terms of infrastructure versus software and services. But what they've done, in my view, is taken now the next step. I think Hitachi has said, all right, listen, storage is going to the cloud. Dell and EMC are knocking each other's heads off. China's coming into play. Do we really want to you know, try to dominate that business? Rather, why don't we play from our strengths, which is devices, internet of things, the industrial internet. So they buy Pentaho two years ago, we're going to talk more about that, bring an analytics platform, and they're sort of marrying IT and OT, information technology and operational technology, together to go attack what is a you know, trillion dollar marketplace. Yeah. That's it. So Pentaho was a very strategic acquisition for Hitachi. Of course, you know Hitachi Data Systems plus Hitachi Insights plus Pentaho equals Hitachi Vantara. Pentaho was one of the pioneering vendors more than a decade ago in the whole open source analytics arena. If you if you cast your mind back to the middle millennium decade. Um, Open source was starting to come into its own, of course, we'd already had Linux and so forth, but in terms of the data world, we're talking about the pre-Hadoop era, we're talking about the pre-Spark era, we're talking about the pre-TensorFlow era. Hita or Ventaho, I should say, at that time, um, which is, by the way, now a product group within Hitachi Vantara, it's not a standalone company. Pentaho established itself as the spearhead for open source predictive analytics and data mining they made something called Weka, which is an open source data mining toolkit that was actually developed initially in New Zealand. The core of their offering to market, um, in many ways, in the, they became very much a core player in terms of analytics as a service and so forth, but very much established themselves, Pentaho, as um, an up and coming solution provider taking a more or less uh, by the book open source approach for delivering solutions to market. But they were, you know, they were entering a market that was already fairly mature in terms of data mining, because you're talking about the mid-2000s, you already had SAS and SPSS and some of the others that had been in that space and done quite well for, for a long time. And so, cut ahead to the present day, um, Pentaho had evolved to incorporate some fairly robust data integration, data transformation, all ETL capabilities into their portfolio. They'd become a big data player in their own right with a strong focus on embedded analytics as the uh, keynoters indicated this morning. But it, there's a certain point where in this decade it became clear that they couldn't go it uh, any further in terms of differentiating themselves in this space in a space that's dominated by Hadoop and Spark and like AI, things like TensorFlow, unless they're a part of a more diversified solution provider that offered, especially I think the critical thing was, 
the edge orientation of the industrial internet of things, uh, which is really where many of the opportunities are now for um, in, you know, uh, a variety of new markets that are opening up, including autonomous vehicles, which was the focus of, of so Ella Hilla. Let's clarify some things a little bit. So Pentaho actually started before the big, before the whole Hadoop movement, yeah. right? So, yeah. so that's kind of interesting. And then, you know, they were a young company when Hadoop sort of just started to take off, and they said, all right, we, we, can, we can adopt these techniques and processes as well. Yeah. So they weren't too legacy, right? No. Uh, so they were able to sort of ride that modern wave. But essentially, they're in the business of data, I call it data management. Now maybe yeah. that's not the right term, but they do ingest, they're doing you know, ETL, you know, transformation anyway. Uh, they're embedding, they've got analytics, they're embedding analytics. Like you said, they're building on top of In the Weka. first flush of BI as a hot topic in the market in the mid-2000s, the mid they were a fairly, became a fairly substantial BI player and that actually helped them to grow in terms of uh, you know, revenues and customers. So and they're so one of those companies that touches on a lot of different areas. Yes. So, so who do we sort of compare them to? Obviously, while well, you think of, of guys like Informatica, yeah, who Informatica do heavy definitely. ETL. Yes. Uh, you mentioned BI, you mentioned before, like guys like SaaS, what about like Tableau. Well, B BI right. would be, you know, like, you know, there's Tableau and ClickView and so forth, but there's also Talent. very much Cognos under IBM, and of course there's the business objects portfolio under SAP. Right, um, and Talent would be? Talent, right oh yeah. There, right? In fact, I think Talent in many ways is the closest analog right. or, um, to Pentaho in terms of a pre predominantly um, open source, go-to-market approach that involves both the robust data integration and cleansing and so forth in the back end, and also a deep dive of, 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 of open source analytics on the front end. So they, their differentiation, they sort of claim, is their sort of end-to-end -end integration. Yeah. Um, which this is something we've been talking about uh, at Wikibon for a while, and George is doing some work here, you probably are too, but, and it's an age old thing in software. It, do you do sort of best of breed, mm -hmm. or do you do an integrated mm -hmm. suite? Now, the interesting thing about, about Pentaho is they don't own their own cloud. Hitachi Ventara doesn't own their own cloud. So they do a lot of, it's an integrated data pipeline, but it doesn't include its own database and other tooling, yeah. right? And so there's an interesting dynamic occurring that we want to talk to Donna Perlick about, obviously, is, is how they position relative to roll your own, and then how they position sort of in the cloud world. And we should ask also, how are they positioning now in the world of deep learning frameworks? I mean, they don't provide near as I know, their own deep learning framework to compete with the likes of TensorFlow or MXNet or CNT and so forth. So where are they going in that regard? I'd like to know. I mean, there are some others who are big players in this space like IBM who don't offer their own deep learning framework but, in, but support m more, m more than one uh, of the existing frameworks in a portfolio that includes all the, some of the, m much of the other componentry. So in other words, what I'm saying is you don't need to have your own deep learning framework or even open source deep learning code base um, to compete in this new marketplace. Um, and perhaps uh, Pentaho's ro or Hitachi Vantara's road mapping, maybe they'll take an IBM-like approach where they'll bundle support or incorporate support for two or more of these third-party tools um, uh, or open source code bases into their solution. Weka is not theirs either, it's open source. I mean, Weka is an open source tool that they've, they've supported from the get-go. Right. Um, and they've done which very is, well by it. Which is kind of like early day machine learning. Yeah. Okay, so we hear about Hitachi's uh, uh, transformation uh, internally. And then their messaging today was, of course. Well, exactly, and that's that's where I really wanted to go next. Was we're talking about it from the product and from the technology standpoint, but one of the things we kept hearing about today was this idea of the double bottom line, and this is how Hitachi Vantara mm -hmm. is really approaching the marketplace by really focusing on better business, better outcomes for their for their customers, and for for obviously for Hitachi Ventara too, but also bettering society. And that's what we're going to see on theCUBE today, is we're going to have a lot of guests uh, who, will, who will come on and talk about how they're using Pentaho to, to solve problems in, um, in healthcare data, in, in keeping kids from dropping out of college, from getting uh, computing and other kinds of internet power to underserved areas. So that, I think that's another really important approach that, that Hitachi Ventara is taking in its model. And in fact, the, the fact that 
Hitachi Ventara, in other words, the Pentaho solution, has been on the market for so long and they have such a wide range of reference customers all over the world in every, many verticals. That's a great most point, verticals, yeah. Uh, willing to go on camera and speak at some length of how they're using it inside their businesses and so forth, speaks volumes about a solution provider, meaning they do good work, they provide good offerings that companies have invested a lot of money in and are willing to vouch for. Uh, that says a lot. Right. Well, and, and so the acquisition was in 2015. I don't believe it was a public number. Um, Satachi Limited, I don't, yeah. I don't think they had a report, but the number I heard was about a half a billion, mm -hmm. which for a company with the potential of Pentaho is actually pretty, pretty cheap, believe it or not. I mean, you see a lot of you know, unicorns, billion dollar plus uh, companies. <clears throat> so, uh, but the more important thing is it, al it allows Hitachi to further its transformation and really go after this you know, trillion dollar business, um, which, it's going to be really interesting to see how that unfolds because you know, while Hitachi has a long-term view, it's culturally, it always takes a long-term view, you still got to make money and, and, and it's, it's fuzzy how you make money in IOT these days. Obviously you can make money selling devices. How do you make money in open source anything? You know? yeah. So well, yeah. Right, well, but they're, they're sort of open source with a, you know, a hybrid model, right? Yeah. And we talked to Brian about this. There's, there's a proprietary component in there so they can make their margin you know, nuts. But, you know, Wikibon, we see this three-tier model emerging, a data model, where you've got the edge and, and some analytics, real-time analytics at the edge, and maybe it persists some of that data, but they're low-cost devices, and then there's yes. this sort of aggregation point, or a hub. Uh, I think uh, Pen, uh, Pentaho today, uh, uh, they called it a, uh, a gateway. Uh, maybe, yeah. it was, uh, maybe it was Brian from gateway. Forrester, but a gateway, where you're sort of aggregating data, and then ultimately the third tier is the cloud. And that cloud, I think, vectors into two areas. One is on-prem and one is was public cloud. It was interesting what Brian from Forrester was saying that basically said puts the nail in the coffin of on-prem analytics and on-prem mm -hmm. big data. Mm -hmm. I, I don't buy that. I don't buy that either. No, I think the, 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 the cloud is going to go to your data. Whatever the, wherever the data lives, the cloud model of, of self-service and agile and elastic is going to go to your data. A couple weeks ago, of course, we Wikibon, we did a webinar for our customers all around the notion of true private cloud. And Dave, of course, and Peter Burris were on it. Explaining that hybrid clouds, of course, public and private play together, but where the cloud experience migrates to where the data is. In other words, the, the data will be both in public and in private clouds, but you'll have the same you know, reliability, high availability, scalability, ease of programming and so forth, wherever you happen to put your data assets. Um, so in other words, we, we, many of our, many customers, many companies we talk to do this, they combine in a zonal architecture, they'll put some of their resource, like some of their analytics will be in the private cloud for, for good reasons, the data needs to stay there for security and so forth, but much in the public cloud where it's way cheaper quite often, but also they can improve service levels for important things. Uh, what I'm getting at is that uh, the whole notion of a true private cloud is critically important to understand that it's all data centric, or it's all gravitating to where the data is. And, the, and really the analytics are gravitating where the to where the data is. And increasingly the data is on the edge itself. It's on those devices where it's being persisted, much of it. Because there's no need to bring much of the raw data to the gateway or to the, uh, to the cloud. If, um, if you can do the predominant uh, bulk of the inferencing on that data at edge devices, and more and more the inferencing to drive things like face recognition from your from your Apple phone is happening on the edge. Most of the data will live there and most of the analytics will be developed centrally and then trained centrally and then pushed to those edge devices. That's the way it's working. Well, it is going to be an exciting conference. I can't wait to hear more, more from all of our guests and from both of you, uh, Dave Vellante and Jim Kobelius. I'm Rebecca Knight. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of Pentaho World brought to you by Hitachi Ventara just after this.